Okay. Can you now? Yeah, there was no sound. Everything was working. And now we have the um, feedback. Okay. We can start over. Okay. We'll be back. Oh, thanks, everybody. Can hear you now. But is there an echo? Does it sound okay, though? Because we're getting a little bit of feedback on that. It's not feedback. It's called an echo. Or an echo. You're going now, they said. All right, we're just going to run with it. Hold on. We will run with it. So. Hold on. I might not need your screen back. What do you mean? Because all I'm seeing is the overhead. That shouldn't change. Hank said they're not hearing an echo, so that's fine. We'll work through it. All right. So while Johnny gets reset here, I am going to reiterate what we're talking about. So he's been viewing this um, bike page, bicycle page, custom bikes on social media. And has been really excited about it. If you've been following him, then you've seen some of his cardboard artwork and he's been doing a lot of bikes lately. So that's what we're going to do tonight. But more importantly, we're going to talk about childhood bike accessories. Well, you, you can hear it. The echo. Killing. Yeah, the echo is pretty bad for us. <laughs> I'm glad you guys can hear us. Find that. So that's all that matters to us. Um, so we're going to do a quick sketch of the bike, but we're going to talk and we'd like to engage with you guys and get your feedback on what you want to share. As a kid, I think we were all there, probably if it all had a bike, and we customized it in our own way. Now, as a, as a girl, I probably didn't do as much, I probably did different stuff than. Some of you guys didn't. I know I didn't change the bike at all. I just accessorized. So we'll talk about that. Um, Johnny's still getting set up here. There it is. Okay. okay. And we are back. 
All right. So now that you're up to speed and we are up to speed. There's got to be a way that go down. I'm just taking an ear off and we're just going to deal with it. I can hear it. All right. So let me tell you who we've got on tonight. Unless there's something you want to share before you dive in. <laughs> oh, my God. That's bad. Okay. I'm going to start this way because I can't do that. It's killing me. Okay. It's not bothering you. I only have it in one ear. <laughs> you still can't. You still hear it. Mm -hmm. But everybody else. We have no action. He said it's fine. So we are going to get started. So what did you want to say about tonight? Interesting. Talk in your microphone, please. Hello? Like, talk in the I microphone. I am talking into the microphone. Hello. Testing. Like, your, yours isn't picking up. Like, mine is picking up. I can hear myself. Okay. Still... In any case, we're going to get moving. So... We've got Brian Jones joining us from Powder Springs, awesome. Georgia. Howard Pierpont said it's 78 getting ready to rain in Mineola, awesome. Texas. Okay. Well, then we'll start. So, again, the whole idea was, again, as anybody uh, reiterated, we uh, custom bicycles. So, you had, yes. you, you accessorized your bike. You didn't customize your bike. I didn't change the mechanics of it, and I did not change the structure of it. I just added stuff to it. Like, I had, um, I was telling you, my mom bought those little reflector beads that I could put on my spokes. <laughs> Where did you get those? I don't know. They were probably not reflector beads. I didn't, I wasn't allowed past the streetlights going on, so I really never rode it in the dark. <laughs> I don't know what the, that reflector bead would have to do with being not able to ride your bike in the dark. No, she just wouldn't let me oh, remember. I, I was in bed at 7 o'clock. My friends were still playing outside. We remember this story right. from podcast pass. Yes. <laughs> so I was deprived. <laughs> I wasn't allowed outside past a certain time. Anyways, um, so she got me these little big, um, I couldn't, because we had to de-spoke the bike in order to slip them on. They may have just been regular beads. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What I found was cut a slit in them. Who was going to cut the slit, babe? I, they were going to trust me with the straight edge. Why would you have to disassemble your bicycle? I didn't. I just the spokes popped out. Right, I so had to slide them on. Right, so if you pull that spoke out, you're untrue your wheel, and your wheel was probably all wobbly. Who knows? I did go down. So I still have the spark, and I need to prove it. But um, I did that, and then I did the whole clothespin um, playing card thing to make it make noise. You remember that? Oh uh, yeah. Um, and then of course I had like, the tassels. I had a basket. I had a bell. I had a basket on the back. I had. I decorated it for like Christmas, just with like garland and stuff like that. And, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty silly, but but it was like one thing that yeah, I was you able to do. Decorated for the holidays. You see me now. I I know. I'm just. Yeah. Really? So I did. Yeah. Okay. You never did. <laughs> did any other girls do that? Because it maybe it you was had, just like, a you decorated you had a Thanksgiving Christmas. No. And a... no, it was pretty much just Christmas and like for Easter because I had a basket that would decorate it with Easter grass and eggs and stuff in it. You never did that? <laughs> Pretty sure it was just a girl thing. Let That's me tell amazing. you who else we have on. Um, Lizzie Godfrey is joining us as well. We've got Gary Seafree joining us. Hey, he said, hey, guys, your mics aren't working. That was earlier, so we should be good now. Yep, Hank D is joining us. Lizzie Daughtry is joining us. Awesome. Um, Lizzie's giving us her Ms. Butterfree 34 YouTube channel. So go check that out. Paul Marzi is joining us. Joe Beckham is with us tonight. Welcome. Matt Williams, good evening from Idaho. Welcome to the broadcast. Hopefully you guys can see what we're doing here. I think we can. Chris Allen is joining us. Mike Quilliams is joining us. All righty. And let's see. Clarence Oliver is on the broadcast what? tonight. He says, hello, okay. I am here. We really enjoyed meeting Clarence at the yes, Autorama show. One time. Um, he, he let us sit in the car. 
much like stuff. we were behind the ropes i felt so privileged yeah it was <laughs> thank it you Clara. It like felt like vips it did and he didn't know us from adam and he, now he knows us but yeah that was so cool <laughs> now he knows us he's like oh, i probably shouldn't have done that <laughs> these people <laughs> can't even get their mics working <laughs> Ron Sedak is joining us. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah, <laughs> We've got Shagger joining us. Probably from the La Blanca garage. Good evening, he says. Um, as he's reminding everyone that she does auctions every Wednesday night on her YouTube channel. Please come check it out. We've got Frank Pupello joining us. He says, okay, kids, what time is it? It's sketchy live time. Like, that should be our new intro. Yeah, like, uh, like, uh, <laughs> Captain Kangaroo. Or... SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, is that what it was? Are you ready, kids? <laughs> We've got Ivar Jones joining us. My hey, wife and I are big fans. Oh, thanks. Um, it's still, uh, we're, we still wait for you to collaborate again. Um, uh, maybe with Ian. Yeah. Yeah. We've got Joey Hardwick joining us. Welcome. Hey, y'all. Be Cola in the house. What's up? What's up? Uh, Draco said, my sound comes and goes. It may be on my end. It it may be. Yeah. I was going to say, but hopefully it's yours. But (laughs) to throw the bad farm at you, but we're going to hope that that's the case. Paul Marciani was just checking in. He said, have a great show. Must go. Good night. So he's got to get going. Um, but I'm looking at his profile picture, and he's still wearing our front logo, big front logo, Johnny nice. Jalopy yeah, shirt in his profile picture. That's so cool. Way to represent, Paul. Thank you. Uh, Draco said, I had a 67 Mickey Mantle engine on my... How did that work? Hmm. Like, for decoration, or was it functional? The Mickey Mantle baseball card thing. Oh, what's the, he said Mickey Mantle engine. Yeah, so when you put the card in... The oh, okay. Because <laughs> I, I knew who Mickey uh, Mantle I was, but I was confused. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jay Andrew Johnson is joining us. He said, Hey, I finally caught a live feed. LOL. We are happy that you are here. Yes, are. Welcome. And again, we are live on Facebook and on YouTube. We're super excited to be able to have that extra platform that we didn't have yeah. maybe six months ago or so. So yeah, so here we go. We're already headed towards custom bike fun here. We've got the elongated forks. We're doing the ape hanger uh, handlebars here. Which we've seen some bikes like that, but out on the road, and it does not look comfortable. I know people ride motorcycles that way, and tons of people are doing the bikes that way. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can maneuver. Like, have any of you? Driven a bike like that? Again, let's clarify. You're talking bicycle or motorcycle? Either one, I think, would be yeah. difficult. I think it would be difficult. I think it would be a big difference, though. Um, let's see. Robert Frost is tuning in. Hello from Indiana. Welcome, sir. Uh, J. Andrew Johnson said, I'm stoked because I'm a huge custom bike fan. Oh, good. Well, we then you're excited. in the right spot. Johnny has been really taking a liking to these. He's been doing quite a few of them. Hopefully we do it justice. And correct. one of the reasons as well has been because we have been, we've spent time at this little brewery down on the Pinellas bike trail mm-hmm. and seen all different kinds of bikes. We were actually interested in maybe getting the electric bikes. We were electric bikes for, just for longer distance stuff. Them and stuff yeah. Them. I've, I've now because you life. saw a few kids and they were kids, yeah, riding were, these old school bikes. I saw a bunch of kids riding the old uh, cruiser BMX bikes, and it just hit a nerve because I remember being a kid and one of my best friends, uh, a bunch of my friends' uh, parents. I mean, they obviously got them from their parents. Um, in fact, I remember. My good friend Taylor had one red line um, cruiser bike, like you know, 24, 26 inch cruiser bike. It probably was a 24 inch at the time. I don't think they made 26s back then. Maybe they did. You know? I only had a regular uh, BMX bike that my dad had built out of an old puppy frame. 
and um, you know it, all the kids around the neighborhood have the new new style BMX stuff, the red lines, the GTs, like brand new. You know, you know, yeah. Um, what was the other one? Um, uh, uh, SC, I think, was another company. Um, there's a, there's, it's like a resurgence of that stuff going on again. So there's a company out of um, Japan that makes these really cool uh, 26 inch uh, cruisers, uh, BMX cruisers um, called Monza. And I was like, oh my God, it's chrome, chrome frame. It's got a really cool, uh, you know, chromoly wheels and stuff. So I'm like, man, maybe we should get those. Kitty B. And we'll, be I'm the, thinking, we'll, be the, we'll be the only ones cruising those around while everybody else is doing electric bikes. And know? I'm thinking I need the electric, especially for the long. The long, long. I, I'm actually on Mongoose's site right now because I remember yeah, that Mongoose being a big another, deal. This was another company back in the day. I was trying to find when they were when they originated. And I can't. 70s, man. I mean, was it? Well, yeah, in the early 80s was a big deal. That's when all the BMX uh, movies came out. Thrasher. Um, I forget there was there was a bunch of you know look at look at the movie T it was a, it was a ton of BMX bikes in that yeah um this is the 1974 Skip Hess develops the cast magnesium Moto Max wheel in his garage mm -hmm. as a way to make BMX bikes more durable go back to the Karate Kid the original uh when Miyagi rebuilt his his bike I want to say that was that might have been a GT um that's like a totally amazingly rare bike now that whole combination like it's pad set the actual color of the frame the wheels all that stuff is is all now i think they've done some reproduction type stuff of trying to make it look kind of like that but there's there's another uh, thing on youtube with the guy that found the actual karate kid bike oh really yeah that was used in the movie i did, did not it and, and stuff it's really cool i did not realize that mongoose was bmx yeah. It said this led him to found BMX Products, Inc., which made the first Mongoose bike in 1975. Yeah. By 1976, it was the top seller. What did, did you think Mongoose was? I thought it was its own deal. You, I thought BMX was a brand. No. It's, it's bicycle motocross. Um, see? <laughs> didn't know. Bicycle, B, learn moto, M, X, I see cross, that. cross, I BMX. See that. I see it. Yeah. It was kind of like around the days of, you know, when uh, Steve Caballero and uh, Tony Hawk and, uh, you know, uh, those guys were, you know, skateboarding like crazy. And uh, there was a whole other sector of people that were, weren't doing skateboarding. They were doing BMX. So I was uh, not as good as a skater. And uh, it was my best friend um, back when I was a kid who I really would skate. Uh, skate every day with his dad actually built a half bike in the backyard and stuff um but he passed away from leukemia so unfortunately my experience experience um uh death really quickly let's let's bring this down to a real yeah. depressing time yeah. but it's a truthful yeah. thing that happened you know I, 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 you know in the, i think fifth grade you know i had a best friend that i had for you know multiple years and this was not a most of things to yeah, no, it wasn't. But it's an interesting thought just to think of him. Mike Kruger was his name. Well, but you remember good times with him. Doing Absolutely. Bikes, so. Doing bicycles and, again, uh, skateboarding. His dad actually uh, built me a diamond plate skateboard. Fun. And we and um, we would do, so I'd go over to his house all the time. He's the same best friend that I introduced me like saturday night live i want to say maybe he was a year older than so he was kind of a bad influence well he was the only kid so i was got you know he was spoiled oh. he was very spoiled he had everything <laughs> a pool table and a whole thing and dirt bikes and mini bikes and he had a three wheel mini bike and we used to run around his backyard and there's this big field in the back of there and sneak it out and ride it back there when the parents were gone and uh, it was just it was a, such a fun time uh being a kid I came from a family of bikes as well. My dad and my brothers would ride, yeah. especially Stephen. And what they your were dad always, bikes? Uh, I think he did. Huh. Well, he had a motorcycle when he met my mom. No, no kidding. Yeah. You did not know that. Yeah, he had, and I think that's how he got one of the scars that he has on his face from uh -huh. the fall, actually. I'm not going to ask him about it. We'll see yeah, him in a few weeks. But um, yeah, so we had the, we had the dirt bikes as well. 
And of course, I wasn't allowed to ride. Um, <laughs> but I did have, I had my bike and I took that thing everywhere. I mean, think about it. It was, it was, you barely see any, you barely see on bikes anymore yeah it's funny there's that meme that goes around um um that's such a true deal where you know you were out riding around the neighborhood and you're like i wonder where everybody's at and you would see like you know five, a pile six, of in somebody's front so yard oh my yeah. god what's going down over yeah. here something's going on. <laughs> either something's going down or some kid's birthday or some kind of stuff like that or if you just want to know where people were you would drive past the house and you're like oh that's bobby's bike and right you yeah. knew he was there I thought he was sick. Yeah. I was calling his house all day. <laughs> you know, that was, remember those days when yes. you would have friends? Like, your friend time was limited, you know what I mean? Like, you were like, I can't hang out with everybody. You got to hang out with, I would hang out with this guy. And then the other guy would go, hey, what are you doing? Remember that question? Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, um, Just sit here. Uh, just got to kind of hang around house. And then, you know, you're like, then somebody else would call, and you're like, oh, hey, what are you doing? Oh, no, we're going to go down and do this. Oh, I'll go. You know, we're, like, we're going to the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to the woods. I'm sure you were great at that because you're very much a super person that's uh, inviting yourself to things. So I'm sure you were great when you're... I had a posse. They followed me. I was the leader, okay? Is that the ones that you were paying to uh, no. hang out with you? No, that's we'll get into that. Ones? That's a funny that's story. That's not the same ones? No. Okay. Uh, Jim McMillan is saying no audio, um, but everybody else is hearing us. So let me know, Jim, if you can yeah, hear us. Please. Maybe try on YouTube. It would really suck if we've just now spent this whole time and then no one. No, I think people are hearing us. Um, Robert Spears joining us. Welcome, sir. Robert Spear of the Band Milk Podcast. Yes. Uh, fellow New Jersey, and you're going to be up in your neck of the woods next week. We are going to be there. Uh, Jim Pollen. Hey, everyone. From Hobo's Hot Rod Garage in Horseheads, York. 70 degrees, lots of smoke from the Nova Scotia fires. Oh, wow. How the heck is that making its way all the way down? Well, they're they're more north than where we're going, but still. That's crazy. crazy. Mike Hicks is joining us. Hicks, you were the girls we terrorized on our chopped stingrays. <laughs> Yeah. I never had guys chasing me, so. Oh, she's playing. She's playing the coy card. No, I never had any. I was no big deal in the neighborhood, really. No. Draco said, "Card would be worth more than all my bikes in mine now." <laughs> oh, true. Yeah. But I hated the air case. He said. That's so funny because that's. Yeah. Oh. Jay and Johnson said you need to check out rideobc.com. They do some bike shows, like actual bikes. Hmm. Ah, fun. Draco said, check my Springer to see if I ever rode a motorcycle with apes. I don't. Oh, something's also going on with the computer, too, because it's not picking the right color here. Oh. It looks a little, your screen looks a little light. Mm -hmm. Are you plugged in? I am not. Huh. Hmm. Um, Jay Anderson said it's in Vegas every year. We've got the McCoys joining us. Hello from the Kuyans from Cajun country. I still ride my chopper bike when I can. It looks cool, but a beach to ride. Now? I think so. Hello, hello, hello. Check, check, check. Um, I think people had gone from being kids riding their bikes and then. Like if they became unemployed and didn't have a car, they would ride their bike. Like we see a lot of that around here. People hmm. riding bikes as adults that maybe don't have transportation or had one too many drinks behind the wheel or something. They're riding bikes. But yeah, generally sure. those are the only bike riders we see. I don't even see kids out on bikes anymore. The Anderson said, Hey guys, we're multitasking, tuning in while grocery shopping. Oh. Yeah, let me <laughs> that's that. cool. I have a feeling. For some reason, I don't know, maybe something to the, uh, but yeah, it's not even changing colors, right? Hmm. Something is going on. Hank D said, I still have my 1988 uh, all white Dino Detour BMX bike. Oh, no kidding. So, did you, were they doing like the back foot pegs and stuff then, or were you just no, that's, that was freestyle stuff. No, that came later. Yeah, that's what I thought. I don't remember yeah. them having that kind of stuff. I mean, it sounds easy enough where you could just 
probably have manipulated it, but I don't think anybody ever thought to do that until much later. Kevin Johnson joining us. Hello from Hudwis. My BMX bike was my life. Cool yes. Not working. I'm, I'm really irritated. Okay, keep going. I, I do think that Johnny feels the same way. His bike was his life too. And if I, if I look at how he is with his cars, I can totally see him as a little kid with his bike in his life too. Um, Spud Anderson said, I recycled aluminum cans to save for my first BMX bike. That's cool. Way to be entrepreneurial. We've got Uncle Larry Lawrence Crawford joining us. Family, hello. Family, how you guys doing? Looks like things are well. Uncle Larry's beat. 13 hour days for the last hell week. <laughs> Plus, I'm going to try and hang out for a few and I'm going to sleep. Uh, 5 a.m. comes early. Love you guys. Hugs. You're badass, Johnny. And D, don't let anybody do anything different. I love the bikes lately. I'm going to put my mouth or my monies at how, how do I buy one of these? I don't remember anything. <laughs> Get some rest, Cal. Get some rest. We will see you in a few short months. Kevin Johnson said, all my friends and I had several bikes, jumping bikes, wheelie bikes, racing bikes, chopper bikes, upside down bikes. So there were actually different bikes to do different things. Like I literally had one bike and it had to do whatever I needed it to do. Otherwise I wasn't going anywhere. Right. <laughs> Did you have multiple bikes? No, no. I, I mean, like I said, the bike that I got was, um, was really, it wasn't, it wasn't a great bicycle when we got it. So the fact that my dad did some work on it, just work on it and saved it. I'm going to go out of this. Okay. Corey Siebert said, very cool. I love the drawing of the yellow bug you did in green. Very cool. Um, Jay Andrews, said, I wish I knew how to send you a picture of my bikes. You would love them. Um, feel free to post it on Johnny's yeah. page. If you're tuning in from Facebook, we've got uh, the Facebook art page and the Facebook um, Johnny's person page on Facebook. So I don't know where you're tuning in from, which one of those, but yeah, feel free to post it or send it through uh, Messenger or you can email us. Head over to the website, johnnyjalopy.com, and there's all ways to get a hold of us over there Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Corey Siebert is joining us. Can't wait to see your rendering of bug and it started <laughs> what is going on here okay oh yeah that looks inverted almost yeah well no it's just no right. everything is in, it's all been inverted so home phone hey. he's trying to fix it um just fyi it's part of it it's not my fault i'm just gonna note that now Gavin Little joining us. Nice old school Schwinn with some sugar bear front forks. Yeah, you got the little sugar sugar bear in there. Ken Farrell joining us. Hi, you too. I like the idea of the bike. This is going to bring back memories of being a kid. That is what we wanted to, to talk about. And we've done a lot of flashback stuff on our show on Monday nights. We love reminiscing. Johnny and I do it all the time. Yeah. And I feel like there's like, still stories that you're sharing with me like things that i've never known about you or had heard before so it's a nice time to connect and learn some new things about each other when we share stuff like that all right i think we're back to business okay okay um so yes definitely share with us what kind of bike did you have what was your first bike what did you do to it um did you manipulate the frame i don't how did you did he have like how did you manipulate the frame? Your dad. Uh, mine, mine wasn't manipulated. My again, mine was a basic huffy, huffy bicycle that wasn't really a BMX bike. So he took the frame. We basically pulled it and got BMX forks, BMX wheels, so and that's tires. That's changing the frame, then. So no, the forks is just the front part. Right. The you frame would have had is, to take off the other part. That's not modifying the, the frame. Is it's the same. I would have never it's thought to do mind. that. Just the frame is the same. I didn't even change my wheel size. Okay. That's still modifying. So all we did was we painted it. We didn't do any. We didn't cut it or modify it at all. So it was basically a frame. 
which is what a lot of people do with the Stingray is the Stingray frame. They get the same Stingray frames and then they just took the forks and either extended them or they bought prefabricated, which you know in that, that ad that you see that I posted was an ad from um, the manufacturer that was, you know, making um, those extended forks that you could put on your BMX bike or your, um, not your BMX bike, but your, your, your Schwinn or whatever. I won't say my first bike was the BMC bike. That's possible. I mean, you get that, that style bicycle, if you go and you look at it, that's what's really cool. So if you get an opportunity, let's see if I can look up the page. I think it's called the history of bicycles and it's on Facebook. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Cause I just, I just kind of joined it and I'm just really loving it. What are the bikes um, that we that we have in the garage? Those are stingrays. They're stingrays. Yes. I don't. Mine definitely wasn't top of the line. Anyway, share. So that's what I'm get ready to tell you. Um, go to Johnny. I was trying to pull up a picture yeah. just to see what I might have. And um, let me see if I can find. Oh, that's gonna fuck you now. Anyways, I'll find the group. And I'll, I'll make. I'll post a link to it. It's a really neat group. It's all. It's the history of. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't find the picture of the one that I had. We have a couple in the garage, though. The Stingrays, and I don't think mine was a brand name. I think it was just one that they picked up at my parents picked up at Kmart or something. But I remember the banana seed, and then I eventually went to a bike. That Years when I got a little older, so. and that one was fun. They were functional more than fun. The banana seed bike was the one I had the baskets on and stuff, and did the, the little bit so of you, accessories too. Banana seed bicycle was in a brand of bicycle. I know. I'm saying the type. So the, your bike had a banana seat, and again, a lot of those bikes back in the '60s and '70s. Um, All were like that. Yeah. So in that, in that page, there are so many manuscripts. There's Sears made those bikes for a long time. They were, copy, they were copying those style of bikes that Schwinn was doing. Everybody was trying to chase the Schwinn's Stingray. Especially when the Stingray started doing, uh, they did like a collaboration with Mongoose, or not Mongoose, but like a dragster. They were really trying to make their bikes look out of the box like a dragster. That's when you started seeing the shifter, shifting a shifter on it. And you know the really small tire at the front, the really big tire, fat tire at the rear end of it, yeah, I never with a big giant sense. sissy bar on it, so it, extended more than regular banana seat. So there was a lot of manufacturing, and then a bunch of different bicycle companies started coming out and making their own bikes. I'm sure the Japanese market got involved in that too, because you, you know trying to get knockoff bikes that were less expensive than the Stingrays. So you had this bike. And mine then... was a. Mine was a. Okay. And again, we turned it into. A, my dad and couldn't really afford. I couldn't. My mom and dad couldn't afford to buy me a a, a red line bike or a GT or whatever. But you had that through high school then, no. or okay, so no. you eventually went only to a geared in, only through geared <laughs> only through grade school. So probably okay. about fifth grade, fourth fifth grade, I got that bike. My dad redid it. Um, so in our neighborhood in Santa Maria in Waller Park. If anybody's from the area, Waller Park, there was a BMX track there. It still may be there, functioning BMX track. So it was the first uh, after you know, we, again, I've seen all these movies, you know, guys racing and you know, people were riding their bikes and wearing the racing pants and the shirts and all helmets and all that stuff. Like that was another cool time. You're like, this is cool to ride, wear a full helmet because you know you were doing evil carnival. You were pretending. You run a motorcycle. I was an evil kid way before that. Oh. <laughs> That's why I have the little front teeth. Um, <laughs> was that on that bike? Yes. <laughs> that bike had seen a lot. Didn't you bend the frame? No. Oh, I thought you said you fell and put no. something on it. So I can tell a story. Or, Go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, so Waller Park. So we would ride uh, our bikes for miles to Waller Park. Right. So we could ride the BMX bike track that they had built. And it was the first time I had ever seen a tabletop jump, you know. And again, just like in the movies, there was the kids that were out there with the badass bikes, like race teams were practicing or something. 
And here, here comes the Motley crew of me and my buddies where maybe one guy had an actual real racing BMX bike. And the rest of us had these hoopty bikes and we're trying to cover the jumps and all that kind of stuff. But we had a good time and uh, we dared him to talk with any crap. <laughs> we were, awesome. as your kids would say, we were ready to tussle. Right. Tussle. <laughs> We've got Detroit Rug Company. Uncle, hey, Uncle Larry, this is our cousin. This is Uncle Larry. So. Hey. Good evening. Nothing like Fantastic. working in the shop with some JJ screaming on the big screen. Hey, Whoop. man. Thanks for watching. Made it on the big screen. Appreciate it. Ken Farrell said, my first bike was a Huffy with a banana seat and a big sissy bar on the bottom. Yeah. So, again, all these guys, think about all of these guys, are shitty. all of you that are chiming in. If you open up their garages, they probably all got hot rods in them. And that bike, back when they were a kid, was the first dip of the toe into customizing and, and the thought of, like, I'm going to have this personalized mode of transportation. So that was a cool thing about my bike, is even though it was <clears throat> a, a, a great, my dad was like, well, make it how you want it, what you want. And I'm like, well, my favorite color is blue. My favorite color was blue. So we got blue tires, which that was amazing. Because all, well, all the expensive bikes all had color, color red bike, uh, tires or yellow tires. So we got blue tires. And then I got the uh, custom, they were fiberglass. I don't know what they were made out of. Mag wheels. Like oh. they weren't spokes. They were full on mag. And they were blue. Do you have any pictures of this? Set I wish I did. I might, actually. Mom, if we go man. through and we look at the... Uh, Go back and we look at some of them, the the uh, photo albums. Maybe maybe there is a picture of my old puppy. But uh, I, again, I was super stoked. That my dad went to all the trouble. Did your puppy have the BMC? No, it had a full BMX race, okay. which was like nothing. Yeah, took all the fenders. It had fenders when I when it was purchased. So I want to say we, they, I want to say they either bought that bicycle from Sears or JC Penney's. So that's what I mean. It was, a, you know, and I rode the hell out of it. I was hard on myself. I beat up myself. Really? Bit. Huh. And so, yeah, all my stuff. Lady. Richard Mead is joining us. He says, yo, Johnny. He's tuning in from you. Too, What's going on? Have to see you. Um, yeah. Uncle Larry said, what did you say? You'll see me in a short month. I hear you right. I may not be able to talk or type right, but I did hear you right. We're going to be there in September. We're already in June. It's a couple months away. I mean, this thing, this show's going to be right around the corner. I'm assuming yeah. you're going to be there. We got to assume. Uh, Richard Mead said, and it be, of course. Thank you, sir, for the acknowledgement. <laughs> yeah. um, he said he was a man of the 60s. The Stingray was a brand was brand new and all the rage. Yeah, that was the coolest bike Again, back in that time. Again, they, looked, they looked like dragsters, you know, as a kid when you got on that thing. I mean, no, no different than when I had a big wheel. Uh, you know, that was the shit. Did you customize that? Uh, well, Probably uh, tried. I had the original big wheel, and then my mom and dad for Christmas got my brother and me matching set of Chips oh. big wheel. Because <laughs> Chips was a big deal. And then they That's actually bought great. us, like, the, the Chips police pack, where it was, like, the sunglasses and the gun the holster. And... Uh, Badges, I think they had badges. Oh, maybe it didn't have the chips helmets. Did your and big wheels own. have actual wheels or were they the plastic wheels? They were the, they were the plastic wheels. Oh, okay. So I was going to say, I had plastic and wheels. Again, again, it was in the chips theme. So it had chip stickers on it and uh, that kind of stuff. And then one of the kids down the street had a green machine. Do you remember those? No. You don't remember the green machine? Oh, every kid wanted a green machine. I got to look it up. Now. Look it up. It's Greatest pedaling non bicycle uh, machine out there was the greatest thing. Oh, this? Yeah. Yeah. With hand levers? And hand levers. It's, you, it, so, in a big wheel, you would steer like a bicycle. Yeah. In the green machine, you would pedal the big front wheel and the levers would, would pivot the rear tires. I see that. So, you would jam it along, you know? You jam and then you slip that sucker like, oh, shit. and it would make the wheels cut that way and you slide sideways. Don't they call that drifting? Oh, well, maybe now. Drifting. drifting. That's so funny. 
Yeah, it was the greatest. Kevin Johnson said they made a clown bike once by changing spoke lengths on both wheels to make it go up and down while riding. <laughs> yeah. So, again, so, you know, as there were, you know, I, I see, I've seen pictures where Ian has built crazy five story bikes, you know, frame on frame on frame on frame on frame, where you like push and start climbing up it as you're going. Oh, so scary. Um, but yeah, so those guys, and we didn't. In my neighborhood, I didn't. There wasn't a lot of dudes. That, they, they all, again, where I came from, they either had um, BMX, regular BMX bikes. Um, a, a couple guys had the stingrays, but hmm. uh, it was still fun. Corey Siebert says, "Can't do it smashed and flat. Slide it over the fork and stick a bolt through it and drill holes that day, and it's a chopper." <laughs> <laughs> Richard Mead said, I got a cheap five speed from WT Grants with the stick shift ready to turn into a unit with a one cra with one crash or set to stop. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that, again, that's um, the story of my front teeth uh, not being real. Is, uh, of course, that was when, that's when puberty hit. I was chasing some girl on a bike. And what happened? My pedal, my so my pedals were broken on that same bike. That's how I kept riding it. You know when the pedals get destroyed, and it just had the bar sticker. I've on. never had that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I did. You're poor. Um, so we're I'm pedaling along as I'm chasing after her. My foot slips off the peg thing. It's not a pedal, and catches the concrete. And the somehow I turn and the handlebars go sideways and I get launched over the top of the <laughs> handlebars. And you know where the concrete has the splits in them? Of course, I went up in the air. <laughs> that? Yeah. And my teeth, like that's the split of the concrete. My teeth just go Gay! and snap right in half. Great. So now I'm sitting laying there and blood is just pouring out of my face. And I'm... And you're like, Samantha. <laughs> no, I was like, my first thought was Chrissy. <laughs> no, no. My first thought was, my dad's gonna kill me. We don't have any money for dental work. My dad's gonna kill me. And I just started freaking out and and was crying. Right. And everybody's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah." Is, this, is my dad anywhere around here? I'm so worried my dad is gonna kill me. So then my parents scoop me up, take me. I'm crying the whole way to the hospital. I get inside. They're like, are you okay? Are you in pain? I'm like, my dad's going to kill me. All I can think of is my dad killing me. And they're like, your dad's not going to kill you. Just stop crying. I'm like, you understand. He's going to kill me. <laughs> I was not in pain. I think I was in shock. I'm sure he was but I was happy. so scared. My dad was going to kill me. I think we even got pulled over on the way. And, he was hauling and you, ass. And you never got the drug. Well, no. No. <laughs> No, no, I did not. I did not. She, I think she was two years older than me. Too. Anyways, hot though. Anyways, um, so my dad drove me. So we lived in Orchid, in you know, outside of Santa Maria, and he drove me all the way because again, he didn't have dental insurance other than through, thank goodness, I think retired from the military, and he drove me all the way to the base hospital, which was I don't know how. Google how far away Orchid to of Vandenberg Air Force Base is. Probably 10 miles or so. It sure seemed like it was a million miles away. Unreal. Oh, Corey Cyber said we used to take conduit, smash, and flat, slide over the forks, drill holes, and an instant chopper. Nice. Yeah. Um, Rob Moore is joining us from YouTube. He said, my bicycles were not memorable. I did have a banana seat bike and a cool moped. Oh, okay. I wanted a moped. I had in the, the worst way. And I feel like there was a time, like in the 80s and 90s, when they were really hot. And That's then they there. kind of went out of style, and now they're back uh, by way of the Vespa. That's come back. Is yeah. That, that was kind well, of Vespas of, were still, yeah, way. Was, maybe but overseas, had, but not in the U.S. They I had, um, yeah, when they weren't, I didn't get one when it was popular to have one. I got one because it was the only mode of transportation I could get other than riding a bicycle to work at uh, home. Or to school, um, I had one of those ones, 
you know, where you pedal it. You you start get, it. It was like a bicycle. Like it, you didn't it's have like a lawnmower. Things. Yeah, you didn't have to have a license because it was it had pedals. So that's how you could get away, away from the motorcycle laws. So you technically had an electric bike at one time. Yeah, it was, was gas powered. I'm kidding. How are you kidding? It wasn't electric. Because we're talking about whatever. We're talking about a bike that you don't have to pedal. That's basically what that was. A bike you didn't have to pedal. Oh, only electric bikes you don't have to pedal. I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. I'm calling you out on it. Whatever. Dana Ball is joining us. I had a stingray with a three speed shifter. Nice. Very cool. I didn't I didn't have any shifting capability on my banana seat. And again, it, <laughs> you don't know what kind of bike it is. I don't. Mm. I want to say Kmart. That's where they shot. It might have been a Kmart bike. And again, it was probably a, a, a what would have been a knockoff brand then. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Like a equivalent of Walmart's next. Yeah. Well, that yeah, there's a great example that yeah. there are the next bikes and and uh, but man, you, you go to the store now and you look at bicycles, even the crappy bike looks so cool. The little kids are way really cooler than these bikes. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. I like to be a kid again. Yeah. Um, Richard Bates said the big thing for us was to get junk bikes, hacksaw off the forks, and then use them to extend your front end up. Yeah, that was the big deal. See, and I didn't do that so. That's actually, it's a modification. I literally got on my bike, put a basket on it, and started riding. Well, it sounds like you were probably pretty limited as far as what you had available to you. So um, I was limited as to where I could go. You remember visiting that's, that's Dove true. Street, and it was literally one block, which consisted of one, two, three, four houses. It was the <laughs> length of four houses. <laughs> That was my area of being able to play. I wasn't allowed to cross the street. Mm. Had to stop at the stop sign. Like you didn't go. Well, you had kind of a field behind you, though. You didn't already explore in there. We were in the woods. I'm talking about this is when I was young, when I was like under ten. Okay, what grade is that? Fifth grade. It was a fifth and fifth and sixth grade. You weren't allowed to go beyond the stop sign. Wow. So we were lucky. Darn it. We were really. Just below our was a field oh. where we could go down, and that was a thing too. So, where I live, ten forty one via Esmeralda was my address. Do you remember your address? Mm -hmm. So ten forty via Esmeralda, you would go down via Esmeralda, and it would drop in this giant. As a kid, it seemed it was like you know ninety degree drop <laughs> down the hill. And it was like a mile. That it went down the hill and it would drop off. And then it would go off into, you'd see two more houses, and then it was this big field. Hmm. It was mile of stuff. So we made, and there were, of course, the older kids were out there riding dirt bikes and made jumps and stuff. So when they weren't out there you know, on the weekends, that's where us kids went. And we took our BMX bikes out there and we had our own. We were like, go to Wall. We don't need to go to a dirt mo your BMX track. We have a BMX track out here. It's true. It's free. We our woods was soft sand, so it really oh, wasn't. We had everything compact mud. No, we weren't able to really do that. There were a couple areas, maybe, but we had um, we had a lot of cul-de-sacs, so we would um, we would just hang out in different people's cul-de-sacs. Once I was able to go off the block, but, <laughs> once yeah. Jenny was allowed to get off the block, pretty much. Huh. Um, Jay Anthony Johnson said he sent something through Messenger for us to check oh, out. Cool. We'll take a look at it. Richard Mead said custom shoppers. Basically, that was like your first, yeah. I mean, what guy in here or on this broadcast has can honestly say they've never wanted a motorcycle after riding your bike? Oh, you, sure. You would want it. Yeah, well, you know, evil can evil. Right. Um, Jay Andrew Johnson said that's dragging anchor. <laughs> yeah. Hicks said uh, we had stingrays with solid bar forks, so we would get hollow forks off of other bikes, slide them over the stingray forks, lower the seat, put a sissy bar on it. Yeah. That's cool. That's way cool. Ken Farrell said my one buddy's dad made forks for his stingray and made a chopper out of it. 
yeah, this is where your those guys that were their dads were like hot rod builders and stuff were like riding around with sick bikes because their dads were like, oh, yeah, I can make some custom fenders and put this in the you know, we'll machine this, you know. But then there was the, those ingenuity kids that were like, I ain't waiting for mom and dad to do anything. I'm just gonna build it myself. Richard Mead said, "Draw us the big wheel of your dreams, Johnny. You've <laughs> done done a big wheel design. I think on um, one of the sketchy lives, um, he did, did some kind of that. silly stuff yeah, like that. Um, with the big wheel biker doing the pedaling, of course. Actually, my favorite sketch I did was a <laughs> bar stool uh, bike with a big chopper guy riding it. Yeah." Brian Jones, this is a great comment. Oh my gosh, what a great comment. Um, he says, it's crazy how kids from everywhere did the same mods to their bikes and we didn't have social media to share our ideas. Right, yeah. <laughs> it was just like like you, you were just born with the knowledge of, hey, this would be cool to do. Yeah. That's so funny. Well, it goes back. That's, that's why it's so amazing. Like You'll go to a, a show or a car show or you'll watch on TV and you'll see somebody who's done a lot of things that you're like, oh, those are ideas that or maybe you've done it on your car, you know, that kind of stuff. And you're like, oh, man, I, didn't, I, thought, I, didn't, I thought it was such an original idea. <laughs> you know, meanwhile, nine other guys also had that crazy thought of, like, yeah, I'm going to do Isn't this. it like that with cars, though, too? That's what I just said. Oh, you were talking about back in the day. No. Oh. Okay. Um, Hank B said, I used to have the Duke's Hazard big wheel. Oh, nice. That would have been a cool one. Yeah. It had an emergency brake on the side. You would hit that and spin around like, Crazy. Huh. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, Julie Anderson said, I lived on a hill and big wheels for a death sentence with that cheesy plastic brake. <laughs> yes. It's true. And of course, I, my big wheel, and I have told the story before, was the always the big wheel in the neighborhood that was like had the flat front. You know, one side was flat from doing all the skids. I never used the back brake. I always would lock up the pedals. And then you'd get the cocoon, 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 cocoon. I just remember. I mean, I always trade mine. For, hey, Chuck, you write this one. I'm right here. I was a chubby kid, and God forbid you got on a sandy area in the big wheel, my tires would just spin because mm. there was no traction whatsoever, and I was too heavy. So, oh. yeah. Sorry about that. Dana said, sadly, I was too old or big for a big wheel by the time they came out. Oh. They're fun. My kick said, little daddy always outdid us because we had big daddy shop. His was pinstripes by Von Dutch. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Kevin Johnson said, we took our bikes completely apart, cleaned everything in gas, re-greased them, and put them back together regularly just for something to do. <laughs> well, and again, you know, find, you know, in those days, you were like, oh, doing mechanic stuff. And then that's when you first get in trouble for losing your dad's tools. You know, I, I remember a lot of times going in my dad's garage who I thought had tons of tools and he was an electrician guy. So he was always tinkering on something electrical type stuff and never fixed anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was always just a graveyard of, of I don't know how many Atari games and uh, controllers we had out there. Ah, I can fix that. I'm sure it's easy to fix. Probably in the cable. It was always the plastic little thing inside the controller piece. Anyways. But it was like a graveyard. But anyways, I'd go in there and I'd get in my dad's toolbox and start going through his tools. And I know I probably lost so much of it in his tools out in the, the dirt. Karma's a bitch, isn't it? Oh, yeah, isn't it though? <laughs> isn't, it? isn't it? Kevin Johnson said, Chicks, big scars. This is a throwback to your, uh, your mishap. Oh. <laughs> uh, Richard Mead said, Who's your technical advisor, Johnny? The microphone ain't under the table. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> we, if you're just new to if the broadcast new, on Mondays, yeah. we generally have some sort of technical some issue. Some sort of technical apologize. issue. Ken Farrell is joining us. He said, My really cool bike as a kid was one Christmas morning, my dad made me bring a hammer back to the garage. And there was a purple Huffy five speed with a shifter, like a car shifter on it, and a sissy bar and a fat, slick tire that was, wasn't good in the snow. LOL. Wow. I have always dreamed of coming down the stairs to a brand new bike with a lot. It never happened. Hmm, really? Never happened for me. Is that how you got yours? Um 
I want to say I got mine on birthdays, yeah. I suppose. And that was the thing I was telling you, was trying to do the story of when I did get a 10 speed, because then that was the way, you know, that was when the movie uh, Breaking the Way came out. And uh, I was like, oh man, I want to be a bicyclist. You know, here's this fat kid. <laughs> He's going to be an Olympic cyclist. And my friend, Ricky Peterson, who was a swimmer and a athlete guy, you know what I mean? So he had a 10 speed bike. His dad was the 10 speed bike guy um, in the 70s or whatever. And uh, I remember getting the bike, uh, the 10 speed bike. And I was so excited. It was silver, all silver, chrome. It was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. It was like a brand new bike. And I could not believe it. And I was like, "This is no way. How did my parents even afford this thing?" And so, it's like the day of my birthday or something like that. I get the bike. We, me and Ricky, go, dude. Let's go, Corn Cornet, whatever the name of the truck store was. Cornet, I think so. In Oak Knolls, we drove. We rode down the big giant dip, up the dip, the crazy ride itself, and we get to. Uh, we get to Cornette. It was Cornette, I'm pretty sure. And then we go inside. I'm like, park it outside. Of course, don't lock it up. Everybody knows everybody. We're not in there. Two seconds. I'm good. Grabbing my cartoon magazine. I come out. Bike is gone. Unreal. Now, his bike is there. And, there's a, and there's a crappy 10 speed also there. Left. I forgot to tell you that part of the story. Yeah. So dummy me rides that bike home thinking you stole something. Did I confuse bike. maybe I confused my bike with it? Maybe. Anyways, we go we long story short, we go home. I mean, folks. Uh, thank God they didn't flip out. I'm sure they flipped out. <laughs> How did your father not kill you? Jeez. <laughs> I was more worried about my mom. Oh my god. Um, and then we so go do the whole, we're going to go to the police station and we file a report. Do you have the serial number? And we, all that whole thing. They take us to the back of the boneyard at the highway patrol. Thousands of bikes, right? And they're like, pick one. They're, no, they're like, is this your bike? And I'm like, no. Well, tell us if you see your bike. Like It, it happened two days ago. Well, we might have picked one. So I'm going, thousands of them. And I'm like looking at all these bikes. I'm like, I wish I had that bike. <laughs> like, here's the time to start lying. I'll get an upgrade. But uh, no bike. And yeah. then a couple of days later, I want to say it was a couple of days, maybe a month. My folks bought me another bike, and I know they could not. You were. Yeah. I know they could not afford to do that, and they still wow. bought me another bike. I think it was because uh, it was easier to get me a bike than have to drive me back. Football practice because that way I could ride. It was functional. I think as as parents, we've all made those decisions sometimes. Yeah. It's a much better deal. Dana Ball was luckily we got a used Honda 50 mini bike when I was 11 or 12. That's Man. fun. Those are they're fun. I was never allowed to ride one. I've never been on a dirt bike. I've I just had, really? nope. I've had my Honda Hurricane. I had that motorcycle. Was it, a hurricane or it was a hurricane. Did it rock you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I never back. I've never been on back. I've never been on Dusty, which is the oh mini bike up the water. The the <laughs> well known in the community <laughs> as the mini bike of the water. Uh, Richard meets the next door when I was a kid. An iron worker moved in and ran a welding shop. He had an Indian hated harvest. There are people that I know that hate harvest. Like when when I have somebody call me for insurance, I do I do insurance. And I have a lot of people call for motorcycle insurance and I'll be like, oh, and a bike, is it a Harley? No. Like dead set. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, well, what is it? It's always, it's always a yacht car. I don't know why. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of people who like import bikes. Yes. Uh, J. Andrew Johnson said, so I am new to this, but will you sell the bike drawing? Yes. Yes. This, will, this part won't be available for 20 bucks on the website. Again, um, over at johnnyjalopi.com, we have the last six, well, five full years. We're in six season now, about halfway through, of Monday night drawing, Monday night shenanigans, shenanigans. and talking, yep. um, 
Hank Dutt, who is our web designer, has has done so much work putting all those videos together, making sure all the videos are uploaded to the website. Um, and then we also have quite a few of them on YouTube too, so you can check it out there. Um, but yes, we do sell every print from every Monday night, $20, uh, 17 by 11 in size. And uh, when Johnny's all done, it will show the final product when he's all through and posted, and that's what will be available. So, yes. Thank you for asking. Uh, Richard Meade said he and his brother were cool, and heck, his garage was the place to hang out. I would imagine. Man. Um, Richard Meade said full custom garage, New Jersey style. <gasps> Another Jersey. Well, hey, there you go. Another. I am also house. from New Jersey. Where in New Jersey? What exit? <laughs> yeah, that is the. That is the That's how we thing. greet each other. Is what exit? So one of the games that we used to play on the bikes. Well, our our little I told you just the cul de sac really. They did they did like a lot of patchwork on it, so there were sections that probably needed to be repaired, and they sent somebody down to repair them. So it was different color um, pavement, but okay. and like almost a different feel to it as well. Some places were a little bit more rocky, some were more smooth. And then whenever it rained, there were specific areas where puddles were. Mm -hmm. So it was like this little highway on the street because we would ride our bike only on these paved areas right. and that was we like had little stop signs <laughs> so, <laughs> like we were driving in the car in the end, and a lot of times when you tell your stories i'm over here going how old were you and like oh, i was like 16 no i was like i was under 10 yeah. i was but i was very youthful like the ten year olds today are like then you, you like had a helmet or? um I might have worn a helmet at the I, no, I didn't I didn't because my injury I was helmetless. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh that's right. You got a mule or something? No. Remember I told you the kid across the street? I know. I'm trying to play like I didn't know. He was riding his bike across the street with Waz. I'm coming long way. <laughs> Everybody else. The thing I just said, because I thought it was funny. What'd you say? Thought you being kicked by a mule. No, it wasn't funny. Anyway, I'm booking at like 50 miles an hour on my bike. I don't know why I was going so fast. He's pulling a wagon on a rope behind his bike. Right. Like slow. And I'm like, dude, you need to move. And I'm going, I'm like, watch out. Watch out. I could not deviate. Mm. And I didn't hit him, and I didn't hit the wagon, but I hit the rope, and I got caught in my tire, and I flipped, busted my knee, huge scar, yeah, never got stitches. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. So there's that story. Yeah, it's that was that was my big um, that was my big accident. Yeah, yeah. Richard meets it straight out of Compton. Compton. Is that even a place? I didn't even know. I grew up in Tom's River, and again, very sheltered. I wasn't allowed off. The you were very sheltered. for quite some time. Um, Ken Farrell said my tattoo is looking crazy. It's almost filled up, and the colors are looking yeah, great. Kind of sure. Yes, uh, so deal. cool. Well, you saw the you uh, saw the, the night. Of, uh, what's funny is the night you got yours. I also you did. You had some more. Got my tattoo. I don't know if you can see it there on my wrist. You also want a tattoo. Um, but I did tat it up. So that's no big whoop. Number three for this gangster girl. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. I could not pull it off. Oh. I will tell you, this was a hard place to get it. I it was not comfortable. Thank God it was small. And then at one point Well, you know, we can say, you know, that choose the tat life. Life it chose me literally, and I want another one again. Really? Yes. I know. I just gotta. I gotta keep them small. If I just do a bunch of small ones, I think you just need to. If you're gonna do it, you need to go in. Let's do this and get a tattoo and play around like play around. I know. I'm just scared of like, time because I my body can only handle so much. That's, that sounds like your brain talking. It, it, like is. it is. It is. You know, I think it was my kicks is not happy. Are you laughing at me? I think 
What? <laughs> Are you doing the left? I'm just rambling. No, I was just over here rambling while you were talking about your tattoo. Don't be jealous. Really? Don't be silly, jealous. I got the silly sweet, language. Sweet <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so funny. Um, Frank Pippola said, don't forget the playing card in the rear wheels, folks. Yeah, we'll definitely. Oh, yeah. Why do you have lemons under your path? Lemons? These. They, it's a, it's an actual um, foam ball. Oh. Frank Pupello. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, did, I forgot you could see that. It's a foam ball. And if he doesn't do this, then Green will be flat. He needs it elevated a little bit so he can see without a glare. So that is why we have the two lemons. His <laughs> Richard Mead said you're from that other New Jersey, Southern Jersey. It's actually Central, Richard. Come on now, Seaside Heights. That's Central Jersey. Sure, it's the shore. It's not even really part of Jersey. It's the shore. Yeah. The part that was ruined. Ken Farrell said I saw that in line. Cool looking. And Frank said, "Good deal." Starting to come along. I like the color choice. Orange is the big favorite color of yours. Now. I do like orange. You it, do like it. It's fun. It's a fun color. Um, I will say, in addition to being a fun thing to do and a recreational thing to do, ride our bikes. Mm -hmm. um, mine was used in my profession. Oh. Yeah. What? Delivering papers. Oh, okay. Yes. So I think a lot of us who had our paper routes yeah, also did sure. that. I also used it to <laughs> deliver. <laughs> <Bike home? laughs> um, I would deliver my Girl Scout cookies as well. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Did some deliveries. Uh, delivering Girl Scout cookies. Well, because you weren't selling Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. I was a brownie and a Girl Scout. Cookies were life. That was also really like a dollar fifty a box, not eight dollars like they are. I'm now. so happy that I grew up in a time of um, the scouts. They it wasn't a lot about selling things. It's or, all selling it stuff. It was all now. about you know adventures and learning things. And I feel like that's how it was for us too. Even though we were girls, there were different types of adventures. Like we we learned how to sew, we learned how to bake, we did crafting. I think that's why I'm so good at crafting now. Oh, is it? <laughs> It's from a long history of getting badges. Yeah. <laughs> See, I came from an era when it was badges. You know what I mean? The stinking badges. <laughs> the one thing that the Girl Scouts didn't get to do was camp, though. The yeah. Boy Scouts, like the guys, always went out. And that's what I'm saying. So that's and it was all like, we're not bringing matches. We're going to rub these sticks together. Like, I remember my brother's going, and it was like super rustic yeah. and then us girls rustic. would get together in like a you know an air conditioned pool house with the rich people yeah. <laughs> live near us. I think we're gonna get our sewing batch today. <laughs> kumbaya <laughs> why would you be saying kumbaya? I don't know. Girl Scouts. Oh. Oh my God. Sure you the girl Scouts and Boy Scouts was um biblical based at one point. Yes. Um, Richard Mead wants to say, wants to know, do I say use guys? No. And I say, what he is. He is. Yes. What he is doing. Yes. Richard Mead said, it ain't the New York metropolitan area. No, that would be New York. Yeah. I'm in Jersey. Ken Farrell said, they have that numbing cream now. Rub it on 90 minutes before he starts and they say it won't hurt you. I might do that. If, if I'm getting a large one, I may look at that. I had actually asked for it when I got this one. Yeah, and they're like, um, you're almost ready to leave. Yeah. Uh, By the time it numbs you. Uh, yeah. You'll be trying to drive home and you won't be able to feel the steering wheel. No. Um, Lizzie said, I was a brownie for about a year, I think. I, it was a great program when we were growing up. but Yeah, I enjoyed my, uh, my Cub Scout, Boy Scout, or... I don't think I ever. I didn't do Cub uh, Boy Scouts. No, just Cub. Uh, I have a picture of you wearing your Cub Scout uniform. Cub Scouts, and then I, what's the one after Cub Scouts? It's not right in the book. Yes, sure it is. Scouts. No, that was below the Cub Scouts. No. I want to say. No, I think Cub Scouts, Bee Boy Scouts. 
What are the Boy Scout rankings? <laughs> um, it says Scout Tenderfoot. What? what the hell I is don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, what rank is Cub Scout? Cub rank badges. There are five rank badges. Arrow of Light. Cub Scout. What? Bobcat. Bobcat. Earn their Bobcat rank first. The remainder of the ranks are earned based on the age of the boy. Uh, mm. The highest position is a senior senior patrol leader or SPL, top dog and head honcho. The troop scribe or the patrol leader council PLC, no big deal. So there's something you would have done. Scribe. I didn't get all the way up. I could have. What grade is a wolf scout? Cub Scouts would have finished first grade or are eight years old. I didn't realize there were all these divisions. Yeah, that's the thing. So when do you become a Boy Scout then? It was like a uh, junior high high school, I thought. Okay, so here it says Cub Scouting is for youth in kindergarten through fifth grade. So you must have put before them. I still I was doing it in um, just a little bit seventh grade. Oh, well, then you were going then you would have been. Oh boy, Scott. Maybe. Hmm. I, don't, I don't remember. It was a fun program, though. I know my brothers liked it, and I really enjoyed being part of the group for Girl Scouts. And then, until until I was in Girl Scouts, I think I did it through middle school, maybe, because I was also in the band. Very clear. So was that. yours was affiliated with school? <clears throat> it was something you would stay after school for. That's where our meetings were. It was it had nothing to do with school. Oh. This was like an extracurricular. Mm -hmm. huh. And we did some stuff on the weekends though too as well. Hmm. Yeah, we didn't have any of that. We've got Bob Shaboom Fries joining What's us. Up, Hi guys. Welcome, sir. Oh, I probably go back to the point. Here we go. There we go. I'm not seeing your computer screen. I'm just seeing the overheads. Oh really? Yeah. Don't mess with it. Going. Um, Mike Hicks said, not laughing at you, with you. We all have scars and missing teeth and broken bones. Hell, Johnny was just bleeding from his face and had to go to the hospital. Oh, I had an incident like that as well. Um, Dana said it was Weblos. 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 Um, Julie said, I hated Girl Scouts. My older brother was a Boy Scout and did all the cool things like tracking and whittling and outdoor stuff. Girl Scouts did sewing and baking and I quit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Remick said, you wouldn't want to be Girl Scouts now. No, it's, I guess it's probably political. I know when I was yeah, in yeah, it, sure it was it getting is. very competitive. And it was like, I mean, now, especially like with the online sales, because we do still support some of our friends and buy uh, cookies from their kids. But it's like, you, if you have a social media presence, like these parents are like, oh, my kid's selling stuff. Here's the link. And that's how they're getting, like, there's no effort on yeah, the part of the kid anymore to even do any of the selling. You, it's, it's a little scarier today out there. I guess. You got to buck up. Yeah. Go with your kids. And parents should be going with their kids. My mom went with me when I was too little to do it by myself. Yeah. Or she made my sister go with me. <laughs> it was probably my sister. <laughs> uh, and then to think about it. <laughs> yeah. But well, she was working. She was doing Who the, was? My mom. Right. She was doing the 11 of 7 shifts at the hospital. So. Right. Um, Dana Baldwin said, well, this was age 9 or 10, Boy Scouts at age 11. Okay. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall That's down. What I hear. Said. <laughs> That's what they said. How funny. So I had my keep around, my cookie delivering. What else did I do on the bike? Um, I did participate in a few races, all of which I lost. My bike was not built for speed, but I would do the races. And when um, you say race, like your friends would race? Yes. I'm not, I'm not professional races. No. Not competitive. Once I was old enough, I I did ride my bike to school a couple of times. Um, and I would ride, you know, obviously up to the store. We'd go to the pizza place, you know, just regular touring around 
type stuff. My mom would sometimes send me up to the store to get stuff, so I'd be a grocery courier. But yeah, That's just normal. I can see little B would be supposed to be able to go to the store. I'm helping my mom. I was a good daughter. So they could I could count see, on me. I was dependable. I could see that. Very much like I am now. Organized. People pleaser. It yeah. was sickening. It was really was sick. Really, <laughs> a lot of uh, clipboards. Yeah. Love I clipboard. love I love clipboards. You love a clipboard and you love a lanyard. And and you know what my new obsession is now? You saw my Facebook post. No, what is your new obsession? Mugs. Oh, you, that's a new obsession? Well, that's the 700 <laughs> mugs we have up there. You know why? Because I bought them in sets. So what I need to do is get rid of like all the plain ones. Yeah. Because I have Christmas themes. I have spring themes. I have fall themes. Like I need to get rid of the ones that I don't use and just keep my own favorite mugs. Oh, there's a, so, a bunch of them up there you could get rid of. Like I wanted to get one of the world's greatest boss. Why? For you. Whatever. You wouldn't use it. Guy Hodges has joined us. Our Boy Scout troop used to take bike hikes. Did you do that with the Cub Scouts? No, we didn't do anything with our bikes. Huh? So what did you use to use your bike for? Then just transportation and uh, a lot of transportation tracks? and uh, you know going places and getting places. You had a bike route. Or a bike route. route. Huge, biggest in the area. Oh really. <laughs> You always have to outdo me. Like I, I can did. never I have had anything. No, my fault. You always gotta one up me. Well, you had four houses, and your dad probably drove you around on a, a car. Uh, there were times that he did drive he me. Never did. No one drove me ever. Sundays he would drive me. The papers were too heavy. I'd have to make yeah. fifteen million Didn't trips. Have that luxury. I was. It was like yeah, this is your job. It's your responsibility. Richard, you want the money, don't you? I'm like, yeah. No, earn no, it. Go. Earn That's it. Exactly. Richard Mead said, maybe I shouldn't tell you this. We used to go Christmas caroling, had an entire routine with encore and everything. When asked who you with, we always said Boy Scouts. <laughs> Why? Why couldn't you tell me this? I love Christmas caroling. We talked about this at Christmas time. I miss the caroling. I want to bring it back. Um, I would I'd venture to say, I don't know if you don't. I would love if I had friends, number one. And then <laughs> if I had friends that were musically inclined, or yeah. even if you're not, so, let's just, just so. go do it and just bless people. I think that would be so fun to do. And Johnny has an amazing singing voice. I think if you're going to bless people, you probably should you know, maybe reconsider. I think it would be great. In fact, I may talk to our fellowship and see if that's something that they would be happy to do. How fun would that be? I'd love to hear one. Richard Mead said, we made the cookies and hot chocolate were good, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing uh, hot about, well, actually, the, the air is hot in Florida. Bless you. Um, we wouldn't be doing hot chocolate down here at Christmas time. I don't think we. there's ever really a time to drink hot chocolate in Florida. <laughs> So there's a few Bless times. you. Excuse Guys, look at the way the chrome is coming out on this bike. Loving the purple with the blue. Love the sketchy design that you're doing here. This is going to be cool. And it tells a story. And you all were a part of it with us tonight. I love it. Yeah. So much fun. We had, we had talked about childhood games and activities as well. Did it's you guys do manhunt? Manhunt no, on bikes? Yeah. We did not, not on bikes. Everything was on bikes. So we, you know, we did the, the hide and seek and all that kind of stuff. Oh, see, we used to do man on bikes. We would do, um, what do you call it? On bikes. Yeah. I don't get it. You how would be. I mean, how do you do that? It's man hunts basically just a giant hide and seek, but you would be on bikes, and it was easier and quicker for you to move. You guys were so lazy. How is riding a bike lazy? It's better cardio than just staying in the same spot. We would move around. We wouldn't stay in the same pot, spot. <laughs> um, what was the other one we would do? We did... Um, oh, what is the name of the thing when you have to find stuff? Scavenger, Scavenger hunt. We would do that on bikes, too. We had our bikes for everything. 
Oh, you were, you were more ride or die than I thought. Good, <laughs> good on you. Of course, that was a little bit later. That, that was more when I had the 10 school. Yeah, I was going to say. When I was allowed off the block. I think I was in middle school. I was probably 12 or 13 before she finally let me off the block. But, yeah, and we had we had the greatest neighborhood. I have, I'm still friends yeah. with a lot of people from my neighborhood. A lot of the girls I used to hang out with. We had our own little posse. Um, it's just... It makes me sad sometimes because those were the best times, and I feel like I took it for granted. I think we probably all feel that way at some point. Yeah, I would definitely do those things. I think I go back and think about the simplicity of being a kid back then. Oh yeah, we you know we thought we didn't have things and and stuff like that. Again, I, you know, in thinking of that memory, here's my folks buying that bike for me, get it stolen, and then they just it, and they didn't have the money to do that. Stuff. Right. So it's just for kids, you know. And you see it now. Richard Mead said, Johnny, you forgot the cover. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's add. Let's add that there. Now, did anybody have the tune tail attached to the bike? Is that something you accessorized with? Why would you? Yeah. Everybody had a coon tail. Well, I had a rabbit's foot. <laughs> we couldn't afford it. Yeah. I had a rabbit's foot on my bike. That was the thing to do. Weirdo. Had my beads on the spokes. Weirdo. I don't know why I thought they were glow in the dark. They probably weren't. I think they were probably just like her sewing, her secret sewing beads or something. I don't know. I mean, you might have had the, uh, I think they made bicycle beads, but they I don't think they would have loved them. And you started saying that you uh, split, took your spokes out. Sp Looks off. That doesn't make sense to me. I'm guessing that's what we did. I don't know. Maybe we didn't. I don't know how else we would have gotten them on. My dad did not sit there and slice every one of them. That's what I'm saying. I don't think he did. Oh, Frank Papel said yes. Coon tail on top of my sissy bar. Thank you. So there was someone. Um, Dana said, yep. I was using baseball cards and my spoke the same way. Oh, see, I was using regular playing cards. I didn't have baseball cards. Did you have baseball cards? Used? Um, no, I, I used playing cards as well. Yeah, I think my kids used their Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Remember Yu-Gi-Oh? You don't remember that? My kids Goodness. used to play with Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon. Goodness, how funny! What are you doing? Hearts. Yeah. Cute. Yep. So he did have a coon tail. Thank you. I'm not the only one. Yeah, I loved, I loved the lightning bugs. We don't have them here. But I remember after dark again, once I was finally allowed outside after dark, <laughs> we used to ride our bikes and catch, uh, catch lightning bugs in jars. Did you guys do that? Did you have lightning bugs out for you? Have you ever seen them other than when we went to Jersey? Really? Huh. We used to do that, and then it used to be, what was the plant? There was a flowered honeysuckles, and we would eat honeysuckles. Like, I'm out there eating. I'm, like, foraging for a snack. I could have been killed, <laughs> like, eating poison ivy or some yeah. kind of berry or something. Yeah. Um, always the ace in the spokes, Frank said. I guess so. Technical difficulties. Thanks for winding down. Yeah. It uh, looks cool, though. Can you move that long? Yeah, so people can see it. Yeah, I'm just trying to finish this. It's not letting me, so stick with the drawing utensil. Okay. Finishing up some little details. What other kinds of outdoor stuff did you guys do? Tag, and hunt? Uh, I can see, again, we spent some time down in that field. We'd go. So you were just mainly doing like jumps and stuff down there? Did you guys play soccer? Did you do sports yeah, down there? Oh, street, baseball? Street football, baseball at the time. Okay. So that was always going on. That was always out in front of our house. And basketball. My brothers were hockey players. So we had soccer nights set up. And they had free hockey with the ball and everything. So we 
we used to do a lot of street art and stuff in front of our house. And what was cool is my brother, um, Ralph, who is six years older than me. So just imagine I'm like out there watching all of his hot friends come over and <laughs> I'm just sitting there <laughs> and they wouldn't let me play. I wouldn't, I wasn't able to play baseball with them or basketball with them. Couldn't play hockey with them, but, but when they missed the net and it went, went down the all the street. way down the street. We'll guess who was getting it? Yeah. Put you to work. So, yeah, but it was, it was cool. We were always outside. There was never a day. Like we were inside. It had to be like, storming bad with lightning if even in the rain we were sent outside to play in the rain yep. did it rain much where you were i didn't think it rained oh, too much in california like it used to rain pretty much every day of summer um fourth of july was always soaking wet we never had a clear fourth of july that i can hmm. remember growing up it always rained it's some good times though it's good times uh the mccoy said i had a coon on the back of my bike but i had to take it off because and kept trying to bite the back of my head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Pubello said, great job, just like when I was 12. Right? A little blast from the past. I was so appreciative of your interactions with that boys. That made it so fun just hearing about your adventures as well and what you did to your bikes. And I, I did buy my kids bikes. I think all my kids had bikes. I don't think any of them did anything special. Cassidy's, my daughter's bike well set remember when we gave her her bike mm -hmm. and it was already all done we had the basket the bell the tassels everything she was all set we didn't do anything to hers um if any of my kids was going to customize anything it would have been Kevin. um he was and still is very big into customizing anything he owns he loves taking things apart and putting them back together but i don't remember him really doing anything to his bike either he was more on a skateboard than he was a bicycle. He was, and, and he does. He did customize that, and he's probably in need of another one now. He just busted his up, so we're on the hunt for a new skateboard. Well, good news, he's an adult and he can buy his own skateboard now. He can. And um, Dylan, Dylan just used his bike for functional as well. He used yeah, to. Dylan, I have to he rode it, it to work. Thing. Yeah, but he was he was in a car though too like the second he got his driver's license he was yep. had had the four wheels upgraded from the two to the four all right there's that our, is so cool there's our, there's love our it chopper. very cool and good. again i still don't think i could ride it with the eight hangers i'm gonna have to try it yeah we'll have to when we go to a bike place or something i just want to get on one and see if i can do it why not don't you think your arms would get like? Have you ever had one? Do you think your arms would get heavy? And I don't know if I could do it. I don't, I don't understand why you think what you're. I don't. I'm really from understand. being from having your arms up the whole time, they don't get fatigued. Hmm. I would think that they will. Mine get fatigued just riding a regular bike. That's why I had to get the cruiser bike. I don't know. I don't think I could do it. I, I can't imagine there I'd be able to turn it well. I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna try it. Not that I'm gonna get one though. I don't think I can pull it off. I mean I wear Converse hats and stuff, but I don't know if I could pull off the ape hanger like <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> Very cool guys. Again, this design tonight will be available on the website once we get it uploaded would you want to do orange i'm trying to find a good color i think it's better that way yeah better lighter that. yeah better yellow different i like it i like it on the tan i like the way it pops super cool likes and loves guys if you were digging this we appreciate you hanging in here with us i would love through to be able to tell the, you huh? through all the mess ups and right troubles every time that's okay people hung in there with us it was fun talking it about was fun time. draco said riding a bike motorcycle with apes is like a sail the wind catches and tries to blow you backwards Imagine, you're kind yeah of like, this, a lot of, like you're putting 
most of uh, I can see riding something like that for short distances, but we've seen people like on I four, like on the interstate, right? Probably went around riding, you know, not too far away either. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We've got the logo, we've got a Johnny Jalopy signature. There you go, guys. Yes, yeah. loving it. Fantastic. Custom sketchy speed back tire going. We got really cool chrome shining. Yes. I almost wonder if I how better it would look without the, the um under drawing, or maybe I'll be less. So, there we go. There we go. That's better. There. Draco said 25 miles for me, and I was done. I would imagine. Lizzie said, awesome job. We've got some likes and loves on this one, guys. So thankful that you joined us tonight and we were able to take this stroll down memory lane. I was talking about all And I will tell you, Johnny and I have been talking a bit about um, scaling back a little, doing some of the drawing. When he's drawing, he cannot talk <laughs> as much. It, it does make it difficult. So. We thought about maybe throwing in every now and again um, a 51 podcast. We have talked for the last. Well, we're just going to, it's going to all be sketchy live. Right. We're, still, we're still talking about the sketchy stuff that we did as kids and all the memories mm -hmm. and different stuff like that. So I think it'd be cool just to kind of keep it, you know, not necessarily giving it a different name. We're, we're the same thing we're doing. Okay. It's cool. But yeah, it'd be fun. And to bringing some. We had talked about yes, it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, totally we definitely want to start getting more people involved and can start uh, talking to you guys directly and, and interacting with you more. And again, we sure appreciate all the comments and, and, and interacting with us on, on nights like tonight. They make it fun to really reminisce and think about. I mean, I'm just, again, it just reminded me of how grateful I am. Even though my parents who worked really hard, I mean, my dad, my mom was a housewife and didn't work. A lot of I think a lot of people in our generations were on the end of the, that era. Um, I'm grateful that my mom, I to take my mom home when I got off of school and stuff like that, which is what my dad wanted. But again, I'm grateful for my dad, who I really didn't see much as a kid because he was working all the time. And how much mine. he sacrificed. Because uh, I know what it's like to get up every day to go to a job. And even if you really like your job, sometimes it's like, ah, oh, so many so many other things I'd rather be doing. My dad worked graveyard shifts, so you know, when we were up and doing, he was sleeping. So mm -hmm. by the time we got home, he had to work. So, yeah. but he he still he still found a way to make sure that we had things. When again, like that, me get bike getting stolen, or even you know, I'm sure as a parent, you know, your kids want the cool, the cool, you know, red line bike. Like I can't, I can't afford. Get my kid that as much as I want to get it for him. You know what I mean? And he still I've found had a way. Feelings. Yeah, we have. And we still found we still found a way to uh make it cool. Make it happen. I mean cool. and it but it still it made me go, oh, I don't have to have new. We can I can have something old and still make it cool. and you worked with him to, to get it done. Yeah. So it was a bonding thing, and sure. it taught you how to then be visionary for your car when you get your truck. And yeah, that was another great story of and my dad sacrificing something that was his. My first vehicle really was something my dad gave me, and I customized the hell out of that thing uh, on the cheap. It was, and it was another one of those deals that everybody else had new and something cool. Something and I didn't. So that'd be a fun. Maybe next, uh, our next episode, we'll talk about Johnny's uh, mini truck days. That'd be fun. We can go the back and talk ride. about you and your CB radio time. We did talk about that already. No it's one still, wants It'd still be it. fun to hear. Go back and listen to what was your call sign again? The Nova here. <laughs> Such a stretch. Because what that's what, what I was driving. driving. 77 Chevy Nova was my grandmother's car. Four door. And it got passed down to me because 71? they weren't driving a 77. That's the one where the body was really bad. It was, right? no, it was a four door. It was a black square four door. I had lights the car. 74? Uh -huh. And the interior was a 
like a powder blue vinyl. You know, it was still the cool body style. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it was black. Oh. With a with a blue oh, interior. Right. Yeah. I loved okay. It. Well, you know what? I was new appreciation for me. Yeah. I thought it was the year after the years after that where they went for that really ugly square body. It it was it was square. No, no, no. The early I mean, I'm thinking like eighty. Uh, let's see. Nineteen seventy-seven Chevy Nova. Oh, seventy-seven. Yeah. What did I say? Seventy-four. I, I liked it. Okay, yeah, it was this. It was the ugly one. <laughs> Weaver. Weaver. <laughs> they were still cool, though. They were still cool. But it was a four-door. Gross or get her. Yeah. It was my grandparents' car. So funny. Pretty sure it still smelled like mothballs when I got it. Well, did it have plastic uh, the plastic seat covers on it? It might as well have. <laughs> <laughs> or did it even have seat covers at all? I, I'll tell you because I was smoking back then. So. Oh, were you sneaking cigs? Yeah. Yeah. It had the ashtray. Did your parents know? That I was smoking? Yeah. yeah. I started smoking when I was 14. For real? Yeah. Oh, man. I used to steal cigarette butts. My cousin and I used to steal cigarette butts from my grandmother's ashtrays and go smoke them in her, crazy. in her so bathroom. Sixth grade? Seventh. Seventh grade. Now your body was, body was a change. She was smoking Ken Reese. <laughs> <laughs> once, once I started buying my own, I, I did do the marbles. Um, I started Shit. off with marble red and then I went to the hundreds. Because we got more cigarettes. I think it's so. Again, the fact that you can have the verbiage about all that stuff. No, didn't do it. My parents were both heavy smokers, and I was. That's like, probably hey, why you didn't do it. My parents smoked in my house. Oh, us too. Yeah. Here's, here's the thing. I, think about. I remember going like to a friend's house, and I gotta imagine they're like that kid's really smoking. Everybody's parents smoked, though. Most yeah. most everybody's parents, so it was like the norm. That's true. Okay, that's a good. At one. least the dad did. Sometimes the mom said, "Right, it, yeah." But yeah, we were pretty much all walking. Did you have any of the parental friends or friends where their parents they were the the drink when they came in the door from work? You know where they had the globe that was the bar. That was my dad. <laughs> he didn't have I'm that. Cracking, I'm not he about wasn't. Cooking. He wasn't a classy drinker. He just had his beer. Oh, so he was in the fridge. He have a stuff of beer fridge. We had the garage for it. Okay. Pool table, all of his right. work stuff. Okay. Yeah, he was out in the garage. Right. If he wasn't sitting in his chair sleeping right. and not letting us change the TV files. that he was not watching. <laughs> no, he didn't watch that. I bet you your dad. Benny Hill. I'm gonna it was you. sitcom. He might have watched Rock for Files. I guarantee your dad watched Rock for Files. Anyways. All right. Mike Hicks said, uh, brought back some great memories. Love you guys. We love you too. Can't hey, thanks to see for hanging you out soon. with us. We you guys yeah we'll let All you guys out, get yeah, sure. um, again one more one more shot of this cool design yeah, this uh, print is available for 20 bucks sketchy live uh grab yourself a copy uh we'll probably have it up in the next day or two we are working towards hopefully this week or into next week we will definitely get our new t-shirt designs uh for the printers Ordered. Yes, um which please. will be uh just to let you know itty b's new shirt which is a oh, we just revisited um, I think I really want to do a color design shirt. We've got to do that Gear Monster design. Can we do that one as the color one? Well, we talked about doing it on white, and you were going to... Yeah. Okay. You might be able to do that. Okay. But we don't have the airbrush up. So maybe we do maybe we do look into doing that. It would be cool, full color. We black could do a white shirt. shirt. Well, I don't really want to do it. It would be on a black shirt. Has to be a black shirt. But yeah, you could do some you have to frame it. color splotch. You know, have to work out. on it. Anyways, that'll be fun. And then, of course, uh, up and coming, we do have, just to let you know, it's coming, a cool bicycle t shirt. We do. Yeah. I worked like one weekend. I sat and I drew a really cool bike and it came up really, really cool with a lot of details. We got to come up with a catchy phrase for it. It has a phrase, remember? Oh, no. You do remember. Come up with it? I might have. Just takes credit for everything. But yes, there was and a phrase, and I think. In any 
case, sure. guys. All right, we're going to let you go. All right. We'll Appreciate you outro. joining us. I know. Okay. I really hey, don't forget to head over to Shopping.com. It is Father's Day coming up. Uh, make sure you get your grads and dads something cool. And <laughs> <laughs> and that would be something cool from the John Jalopy Hot uh, Hot Rod Art website, johnjalopy.com. Got yes. stickers, t-shirts, lots of fun stuff over there. Still great affordable Beanies. gifts. You can do beanies, new hat with the OG uh, black and gray now. Uh, I really love the gray hats. I love that. Um, they're just very uh, another option as far as not all black, mm -hmm. um, but another cool color. And then now uh, we probably have some more new colors of that stuff. Coming soon too, and uh, yeah, there you go. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. I'm sure, appreciate you guys being us. Sorry for all the technical difficulties, but we're glad that you showed up. See you next. Make sure you just like and subscribe. Yes, you keep forgetting, and you probably didn't do that. I but you didn't put that put up on the screen. I bet. I can subscribe. Make sure you're, uh, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure, make sure appreciate your comments. Make sure you hit uh, that like button, and we'll see you guys next Monday. Yes. Have a great sketchy week. Stay and sketchy. as always, stay sketchy. We'll see you.